All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Danielle Coco. I'm the marketing director at SESTA, um, but I'm not going to be presenting today. We are going to devote the whole webinar to um, our, our friends um, who are in Hong Kong and staying up late to uh, be here with us. So our first presenter is Jennifer Clever with the, is it Cleaver or Clever? I'm sorry. I should have Clever. Asked. You got Clever. it right. Okay. Great. Uh, with the Agricultural Trade Office in Hong Kong. Um, so USDA, the Foreign Agriculture Service, um, they have offices all around the world. And um, Jennifer has been in Hong Kong since August of 2021. Correct. Um, so I will let uh, Jennifer um, finish and, uh, and then we'll uh, move on to Elmond. Um, but let's start with Jennifer. Well, thank you, everyone, and, and thank you to um, Sasta for the opportunity to reach out and 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 talk to everyone about uh, you know a market like none other that I uh, work with. So we're very excited to be able to talk to you um, about this market, um, Danielle. I just beg you, if I am running a little bit out of time, just give me like a two minute warning, uh, and I will wrap up. Uh, obediently. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, and sorry, one more thing. Um, in case anybody has questions, I should have said this at the top, please type them into the chat or the Q&A and we'll address them at the end of the presentations. All right, so we have um, a lot of ground to a lot of ground to cover, but I do want to acknowledge um, the wonderful team I have here in Hong Kong, Annie Lai and Chris Lee, uh, who have been with the Agriculture Trade Office. Um, for a number of years and have a great deal of expertise and, and definitely consider them resources on the ground uh, with real time information. And um, as Danielle mentioned, yes, we have offices around the world and, and what we do is, is look at market intelligence, we look at market opportunities and just try to connect uh, local trade with US exporters. So, um, we facilitate uh, business to business uh, encounters, business to consumers. Uh, we, as I mentioned, expand opportunities in the market. And we also try to raise the profile of US foods uh, in the markets where we are um, located. So I'm trying to move my screen. Okay, there we go. There you go. Um, so, like I said, we have a lot of ground to cover. And these are some of the topics that I will uh, touch upon. and. Uh, don't get scared, but we do have um, a lot of exciting things to talk about. Mm -hmm. So I love starting with this with this um, set of facts because I think this tells you right away the kind of market that Hong Kong is and why I, it's so different than than others. Um, you have a, a literacy rate that is off the charts, so your consumers are highly educated. Um, you have a mixture of influences from. Uh, British to uh, mainland to just a rich history. It's a very international city as well. You still have um, high per capita. So your consumers here are very affluent uh, folks, even compared to their um, other uh, wealthy neighbors like uh, Japan. So I am a sad news first type of gal. So um, I figured you're definitely wanting to know what's been happening uh, to the economy and uh, to the market in general. So I, I really wanted to touch on this. Um, the Hong Kong economy, you know, stage of visible recovery in 2021, um, having experienced deep recession in the previous two years, starting in 2019 with the um, social unrest. But the economy turned on strong year-to-year -year expansion in the first half of 2021, uh, thanks to a sharp rebound on global demand um, and posted solid growth in the third and fourth quarter um, as the local pandemic condition uh, was pretty much under control during that time. Um, the recovery, I should say, was uneven because you still had a major component, tourism, still frozen. But in 2021, as a whole, the economy grew 6.4%, as you can see in the graph. This was the fastest pace since 2010, but I will note that um, it was still, the size of the, the, um, the economy was about 2% less than 2018. So without a doubt, uh, Hong Kong has gone through a very turbulent time um, during the first quarter of 2022. 
you guys are catching us pretty much at the end of what we hope is the end of the fifth and deadliest wave of the pandemic. However, there is optimism uh, about the second half of 2020. And this is why we think the timing of this briefing is so timely because as exporters, you can position yourself to leverage that kind of that momentum uh, that the city is, as the city is looking to revitalize um, business activities. So the Hong Kong economy is expected to expand further in 2022, but it really depends on um, the evolution of the pandemic. You know, in taking into account a couple of the government measures that are, are in place, something like the consumer vouchers um, that I think are also going on like a fifth round of consumer vouchers, the economy is forecast to grow between two and 3.5% for all of 2022. Um, so there is hope and you are catching this briefing, you know, as Hong Kong is hoping to um, revitalize. Just a couple of uh, charts more on unemployment rate. I mean, the closure of shops and restaurants and businesses really contributed to the spike in unemployment rate in, in 2022. Um, I will also flag um, that because of how uh, the, the government is imposing restrictions uh, to deal with the pandemic, just in the first three months of 2022, we have seen a brain uh, drain, which I'm sure you've seen on the news, about 140,000 people uh, have left uh, Hong Kong because of the situation. But uh, numbers are getting much better. We, I think for the past couple of days, we've had uh, less than uh, 1,000 cases a day, which is for you guys in the state, this, you're like, this is nothing. You know? yeah, but here, it was a, it's, it's a big deal. It's a population, as you saw, 7.4 million. Um, and we were averaging about 50,000 cases a day not too long ago. Um, but we are... It seems that we are uh, turning a corner. So I would say one of the biggest impacts um, has been visitors and the restrictions that were in, in place um, for inbound travel. And that's something that, that continues to some extent, but there started um, some easing um, on the travel requirements uh, as of April 1st. So some good news there um, as well. Then on uh, April 21st, um, tomorrow, actually, um, the government is, starts, is going to start easing some of the social distancing restrictions. That means that restaurants will stay open until um, 10 o'clock, um, which before it was six. So you can imagine um, definitely going out this weekend. No, I'm not. But every, you know, everybody is very excited uh, about the fact that restaurants are starting to, to open up. So that's um, really good news. I want to highlight something about Hong Kong. Um, I work now in about five or six markets. And one of the things that I've noticed since I've been here is that different than other markets that are heavily dependent on tourism for their economy, Hong Kong has not had the impact on its GDP and its you know, revenue as other countries. And I got to thinking, why is that? because you can see the number of visitors is, is decimated, completely decimated, but yet the economy was still growing. We go back to that first uh, set of numbers I showed you, you have wealthy consumers. You had wealthy consumers that couldn't travel. So what do people do? They would spend at home. And I think that's the difference between this market and other markets, say the market that I just served in um, Spain, where heavily uh, dependent on tourism, but you don't have that affluency in your consumers to actually keep uh, the economy going. So I think that's a very uh, good mark on the Hong Kong economy overall uh, in the fact that you know, it can self-sustain um, you know, even when tourism is as low as it has been. I will note though that the tourism uh, board recently announced that they foresee a rebound of visitors uh, about, of about 9.6 million for the whole of 2022. Um, this doesn't take us to the level that we were uh, previously, but I think it's a vast improvement from where we have been. So more advantages uh, to the Hong Kong uh, market. So we have a very trade-friendly environment, and I cannot emphasize enough that this is seriously 
a very different market than I've ever worked in. Um, one thing to notice though, one country, two systems was what does that mean for you? Well, it's a capitalist system in Hong Kong. You have a separate legal system than mainland. You have a free port, no tariffs on most foods except spirits. Um, Hong Kong continues to exercise independent authority with regards to implementing commercial agreements and uh, maintains its own currency and autonomously sets monetary policy. There's one more item that I think is very important for us it, involved in food trade is that it has its own autonomous food import regulations. And this is key. There, uh, Hong Kong also has a very highly sophisticated and efficient logistics systems. Um, so very easy uh, to get your products uh, in and um, it's just, they have vast experience in moving product around. And what does that mean for you? Well, it means that you also have this ability to connect with other countries in, in Asia um, and try to get a foothold through uh, Hong Kong. You have greater connectivity to the greater Bay Area um, so much more powerful impact just coming from uh, Hong Kong. These are some of the um, events that are coming up. We're keeping a close eye to see if maybe uh, what kind of format there will be. But right now, we're very optimistic that these will take place. These are opportunities for you to showcase your products in Hong Kong. Um, so if you have any questions about those, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can uh, share more information uh, about them, but there are opportunities for you to showcase your product um, in country. So what are the advantages of you selling U.S. products? Well, U.S. food and beverages in Hong Kong have a great reputation. Uh, in fact, uh, we really capitalize on that reputation and uh, have done a delicious USA campaign that the team here has been running for three years, just um, getting folks to know a little bit more. Um, but it's really, we can do this because we have a very good reputation in this market. Um, we have a long history of great trade with Hong Kong. And then again, there are strong re-export opportunities from this market, primarily to mainland, Macau, Vietnam, and Taiwan. And this is my favorite part, just to give you a, a, a concept as to why I appreciate this so much. Um, I served in Beijing for four years and my responsibility was food safety regulations. So you can imagine coming here and finding out this system. You have a predictable and consistent import regulations. You don't have quotas, you don't have import duties except for liquors. There are no plant registration for US products. So, you know, nothing like Decree 145 in the mainland, um, which gave me a lot of headaches. But you don't have, you know, mandatory certification. Uh, you do have it for high risk products. Um, and raw seafood as well as kind of a, a more industry practice. Labeling, a lot of flexibility there. Uh, you have, you're able to use stickers, English labeling. Um, the GE labeling is voluntary and the USDA organic logo is accepted. So touching very quickly on Hong Kong consumer trends. Dynamic, absolutely dynamic food culture. Folks here are foodies. Uh, I, I'm put to shame all the time because I'm learning something new every day. These guys know their food. Um, and again, affluent consumers, they're very busy people. So convenience, but still quality uh, food. Um, it is a high cost of living, but one of the neat things here is there's international cuisines because there's so much influence. Um, I'm from Washington, DC, and I, it really reminds me of that because there's so many people from so many different places um, and you have really good variety of, of uh, restaurants and cuisines. And this is another area that U.S. ingredients can play a part because we have very versatile products. Um, and that's something that we continue to promote through our Delicious USA campaign. I wanted to show you this because it's a high cost of living, but Hong Kongers spend uh, a great deal on housing. 
But if you look at what they spend on food, um, it's a very close second to um, housing. And I'm going a little bit quick. I apologize because I know I have a lot to cover. Within food, um, you, this can give you a breakdown as to where folks are spending uh, their food. I would be very curious because this does not include alcoholic beverages and it was 2020. Uh, let's revisit this when the survey comes back again because maybe alcoholic beverages would have gone up a little bit uh, in 2022. What else about consumer trends? Uh, these folks are really on social media. I think 83% of the population is engaging in social media as of 2018, our latest data. You see that there's a rise in food and beverage e-commerce, uh, a little bit less between 2020 and 2021. I would imagine that 2022, or at least the beginning of 22, is much higher because um, all the restrictions that we face to deal with with the fifth wave of the, of the pandemic. Traceability and food safety, very, very important here. And of course, this awareness on health, a healthy lifestyle, those are the type of products that folks are looking for. But they uh, are information savvy. They're looking for information about um, their products. A few things that we have seen, uh, changes in consumer trends since COVID, no surprise um, here on increased on online sales, growth in delivery, uh, delivery services and just food services, particularly as restaurants were not allowed to be open uh, past six o'clock. So this became a good lifeline for some of the restaurants. Um, and then I did hear from, from big restaurant, hotel restaurants that a lot of their staff were actually leaving uh, to go work for delivery services because they actually offer more flexible schedules. So growth in demand for shelf stable products, we've seen that in the United States as well. Uh, and growth in, in virtual events, which I'm hearing that you guys don't like too much anymore, uh, but we're still doing that but, um, quite a bit. Now here is something. So Hong Kong is like a market you've never seen. Now, who should you be targeting in Hong Kong? So who do we have here? We have your conventional shoppers, uh, your loyal customers purchase that purchase brand and products that they trust, and they listen to friends and family for recommendations. You have your young parents willing to pay the extra for high quality. They check reviews before they do purchases. And um, the end user is not necessarily the buyer. You have adventurous uh, millennials open to trying new products, new experiences constantly connected and look up to influencers for recommendations on what to buy. Other trends that are taking place globally, but we are seeing pretty actively in Hong Kong is, you know, um, as Generation C enters adulthood, um, they have a very different perspective on society, environment, uh, that is drastically different from older generations. So, Many of the brands are now getting their hands on kind of commitment, sustainability, philanthropy. Um, and this seems to be really appealing to, to that generation. The popularization of uh, plant-based meat, meats and meals too. I get bombarded with offers of um, all plant-based uh, meals. Impossible foods and beyond meat are already available in Hong Kong. And there are a lot of um, uh, startups also uh, looking to uh, technology to be able to have um, kind of that texture, uh, meat texture flavor uh, products. And um, the storytelling of green brands is another one that I think is very interesting uh, because it's not necessarily about the packaging, but there is a new concept about having a branded product tell the story about the farming practices uh, behind the product. So. Um, that's another aspect that is, that is very interesting, telling the story behind uh, the brand. I think it's important for you to see, um, if I can move the slide, there we go. What, um, what kind of products are coming in here from the United States? And I don't think it's fair to look at just one year on year trade. 
Um, and we've been doing recently, my office has done a deep dive between the last four years of trade because we peaked in our sales uh, in 2017. And then from 2019 on, um, exports have been lowering. Um, but I should note that the, this last drop in 2021 was less severe than previous ones. So it leads me to believe that there might be some leveling off uh, going on. But there were some products too that I think worth um, mentioning that did pretty well um, despite the, the, the lower exports. So you see um, beef tree nuts, uh, seafood and food preparations. So important to note though, that the drop in exports is not necessarily a drop in US exports overall, because if you look at the high are high value traded items like beef and tree nuts. These are products that were re-exported quite a bit to uh, mainland China. And since 2018, uh, because of the US and China uh, agreement, more of these exports were shipped directly uh, to China. And that's the big explanation behind, but still they kept pretty high levels uh, just for product coming into Hong Kong. And I did wanna mention, um, so there were product categories that actually rebounded in 2021. And I think these are worth paying attention to. Um, edible tree nuts, eggs. Eggs had a great year. It's the year of the egg. Um, wine, condiments and sauces, fruits and vegetable juices, and seafood did really well, frozen seafood. Um, and then, um, you know, even with all the disruptions to global supply chain, uh, U.S. exports as, such as processed fruits uh, and spirits actually maintain their export value from the previous year. And I think this reflects really the strength of the East U.S. products uh, and their presence, despite, uh, you know, the difficulty with shipping. And so Hong Kong in global imports overall in 2021 actually grew. Um, after dropping for two consecutive years. So I do think, I mean, there's are a lot of opportunity here for, uh, for US exports. And this gives you the composition of what Hong Kong is importing from other countries. So if you see the percentage of, of imports from the United States, I really like this chart because this gives you and shows you that there's still a lot of opportunity for us to be able to grab a hold of the market. I won't go too much into retail because Elman is going to talk about that and he knows way more uh, than I do uh, about this topic. But just overall, um, you know, it's a very competitive um, environment. There are high operating costs. And of course, now um, that's something that's, that's ongoing. And um, it, Elman will tell you more about what they are looking for. But one of the things that we have found out is, you know, having that reliability um, innovation. And um, one thing that I can't emphasize enough, and you will hear me say it a few times, is follow-up, follow-up, follow-up is extremely important uh, with your customers, particularly now that you are not able to travel. Um, impact of COVID, again, and no surprise there. Uh, the restrictions did discourage uh, retail sales, and I'm sure Elmans will talk more about that, not only on food, but also not, uh, on non-food items. But, you know, we're hoping that the outlook uh, is positive, and I'll, I'll leave um, Elman to talk more about retail, and I can always return to these slides. Um, so for, you know, I mentioned that Hong Kong, our foodies, it's, it's really amazing. Um, and there's, you know, over 70 uh, Michelin star restaurants. And, you know, I can't wait to like start trying some of those once things um, start opening up. I have my list. Um, and there's also an expansion to um, hopefully casual dining. And I think you're gonna start seeing some of that as we start opening up. And then uh, what I've noticed is uh, cafes and bars that have Instagrammable moments they're big also, you know, having that ability to um, show folks where you're spending your time. Um, and we'll definitely use that when we're promoting products uh, here. So food service in general uh, definitely had a tough time in 2020. They, they had really, I'd say, a very good, strong 
come back at the end of uh, 2021 when, again, pandemic restrictions started easing up. I don't think the first quarter of the year is going to look um, that great because, again, um, restaurants were not fully open. We'll touch very quickly on Macau just to give you an introduction. Um, so Macau is a you know much smaller uh, market, but again, uh, you know, with the rebound on, on per capita GDP and still sign of, signs of recovery uh, in the economy. They have been hit pretty hard, I have to say, with, with uh, inability to receive uh, international visitors. Um, it's, it's really entertainment and uh, in, in, uh, gaming industry, uh, very strong there. And of course, they've been hit uh, hard by uh, the lack of tourism. But prior to COVID, there was this push of um, you know, having that, inter you know, expanding, uh, not so much um, Vegas type, but trying to expand it more to family uh, friendly, which would give more opportunities for us to expand um, our offerings there. Again, great connection to Hong Kong and mainland. In terms of import regulations, there are some slight differences between uh, Macau and Hong Kong, uh, which you can see in the, in the slide. And then one thing I wanted to touch uh, upon, and I'm glad I'm actually trying to keep good on time, um, you know, be prepared to adapt to this market. You're done it with other markets, packaging and, and size order presentation, those things matter. Uh, we're available to you, we're a resource to you on the ground. Um, and we work with Danielle and her team there. Um, so we're always around and available. I said it before and I'm going to say it again, return emails and phone calls, follow up, follow up, follow is extremely important and be willing to invest in, you know, long term market development um, and be ready to start with a small volume. And if there's anything you can take away from this presentation, it's just one thing, one big recommendation that I will make and is there is a distinction, subtle, but there is a distinction when you deal with Hong Kong importers and importers in the mainland. And if you take care of making this distinction, I think it would be very helpful in uh, establishing your relationships here. For example, one of the things is they are very um, able to, uh, English is very easy to communicate. Uh, they do have Western uh, practices. And again, they will import much smaller volumes than um, the neighbors in mainland. So this is a subtle differences, but it's a very important one and it will help you build really good relationships here. In terms of uh, our upcoming activities, um, I mentioned Delicious USA. We partner with um, uh, restaurants in Hong Kong and show the versatility of uh, US ingredients. Um, we had, I think, 30 some, I can't remember any, 30, 40 restaurants. Um, yeah, so- 40, 40 last 40, year. Yes, 40 last 42. year. And so, yeah, so we're hoping to do the same uh, this year again. And we are very active on social media. Annie is our social media master, um, trying to reach out to consumers. And that was very important during the time that we couldn't uh, go out as much as we wanted and folks will engage. Uh, that's a great opportunity for you to, to showcase your products as well. We will be doing in-store promotions. Um, you know, that's, this is important for us. We need to be a part of this space because other suppliers, other countries are really active. Um, and, and so we need to be there as well. And lastly, as we were not able to travel to you and you were not able to travel to us, our office really ramped up on its reporting. Uh, in November of, of last year, we launched our uh, Hong Kong One Tong, which is uh, a small publication uh, that we send uh, twice a month that basically summarizes and, and provides analysis on some of the market developments that we're seeing. I think it's been very well received. Um, Susta is one of our favorite uh, and, uh, readers. And so uh, if you want to subscribe to that, please make sure to send us a note and, and we'll make you part of the, our mailing list. And that's it.
you can always contact us. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you. We have a video um, that's still uh, pretty relevant to show you a little snapshot of, of what uh, to expect in Hong Kong, but you know where to find us and really appreciate the opportunity to uh, touch base with y'all. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, and we, uh, on our the SESTA homepage, we have a news section at the bottom, and we always post the Hong Kong wonton there. So um, you can find their contact information um, is there as well with a link to it. So um, that was a wonderful snapshot of the market and what's been happening over the last few years. It's always interesting to get a couple years pre-COVID too to get that you know that landscape the full picture. Um, all right. Well, now we are going to move on to Elman Chung, who is vice president at City Super Group. Um, he is an importer of fine food and wine into Hong Kong, and I think we'll give um, a really good uh, uh, viewpoint into the, the retail sector there. So, Elman, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Danielle. Um, can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Elman. I run a uh, premium gourmet store in Hong Kong. Uh, I will give you an introduction to it. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for Danielle and Jennifer for connecting me with this event and have the chance to introduce my uh, company, my group uh, to everyone. And so maybe we have an opportunity to work forward. Um, so I give you, uh, today I give you a few um, information or sharing. Uh, uh, first, I introduce uh, our group because uh, our group has actually run a few different retail brands, not just the gourmet store, other brands also. Um, and then I give you a, a little bit more introduction of the uh, CC Super brand, which is the gourmet store. I think is most relevant in this uh, event. Um, and I give you a little bit on the uh, Hong Kong market trend. Actually, a lot uh, Jennifer already shared. Uh, I will be more on the actually the supermarket and the food side. Um, and then just a brief introduction of uh, what we are looking for. So uh, a quick introduction. Um, our group uh, is Seasonal Group. Um, in our group, actually, uh, our history, we are a private company for over 25 years. Uh, we founded this company in, back in 1996. Uh, now we are in operating in the British China uh, region. We have a few store brands that I will introduce later. Um, and we, under our group, actually, we have different sector of business. We have the food retail, we have the F&B, we also have the lifestyle, the trendy lifestyle. And, and actually, that is why uh, under the group, the store brand under the group actually has a synergy of creating, you know, different format and different unique format that combining with different elements um, into our environment. So, uh, so we're quite unique in the, in the market. Uh, we actually resource uh, most of our product from all over the world. So we have a very integrated sourcing network. Uh, we're sourcing from over 66 countries in the world. Uh, we mainly looking for the highest quality, most premium, uh, unique product. Um, and our customer, we're not targeting to the mass market. We are targeting to the high end market. So our customers mostly um, highly affluent. Uh, they're very well educated and also very loyal. Um, and these people are really looking for lifestyle uh, and they enjoy very fine food and wine. So they always look for the, the best in the world. So uh, we are carrying uh, as a whole, the whole group is carrying over almost 50,000 SKU. And these are regular SKU. Uh, we saw some from, from the world uh, under a different store brand. Um, and then we have outlet. We are actually in three markets. We are Hong Kong, we have uh, Shanghai, and then Taiwan. We have outlet in these three um, areas, three cities. Uh, our company size, we have about 2,800 staff uh, supporting our whole operation. So our group mission, uh, we really emphasize lifestyle. So uh, our mission, our group mission is to inspire and enrich our customer lifestyle. Uh, by providing innovative shopping experience. So we want to use our product. We want to um, use our product actually beyond our product to actually bring lifestyle to our customer. Like for example, we don't just bring the uh, US steak. We also want to educate and bring them, you know, what is good for pairing the US steak, uh, what is how, how, you know, how you should enjoy your steak and things like that. So we really emphasize on the lifestyle. Uh, our vision actually is actually open in, in all over the world in the metropolitan city, like uh, New York or Tokyo, 
uh, now we are in three cities. So we have a uh, different store brand. Uh, we have actually four store brand and then one wholesale. Uh, I will introduce them one by one. So uh, C Super. So the first store brand is City Super, which is a, a, a premium gourmet food store, uh, a lifestyle store. We offer the best quality fresh food, groceries, uh, confectioneries, wine, sake. Uh, we also are ready to eat, um, dine in uh, uh, food also. Uh, Non-food, also uh, related to kitchenware, household, uh, also we source these from all over the world. Yes, these are some images you can see from our store. And then we also have a trendy lifestyle store. Uh, these are mainly selling for non-food product, uh, lifestyle product like the stationery, uh, some fashion, uh, gadget or photography, traveling, uh, wellness product, beauty product. So quite, it's quite targeting uh, young young people. And then we have our cocktail daddy, which is our food court, food court model. Uh, food court is actually mainly to bring the international cuisine. Actually, we actually bring in people who has restaurant. We bring the restaurant quality into a more convenient format in a, in a food court. So uh, actually food quality also very important to us. Um, and then this is Silver Eki. Silver Eki is our new baby. Uh, we just we just have the new store, this, this new brand uh, last November. Uh, it's a convenient store format, uh, but the difference is different than Silver Eleven or others, other convenience store is we still aim at the high quality. So we bring the high quality ready to, to eat, uh, ready to go food. Uh, refreshment products and also uh, some uh, to some extent we also some uh, gourmet food you know convenient gourmet food like ham and cheese uh, uh, some high-end yogurt high-end fruit so uh, you see this picture is uh, the first store that we have it's inside an MPL station a subway station uh, it's very small it's about 400 square feet so uh, quite a new baby for us to to expand our reach to in the market and then we have uh, Usa. Uh, we wholesale wine and sake. Uh, we are one of the biggest uh, sake wholesalers uh, in Hong Kong. We uh, we provide to hotel, restaurant. Um, we actually have direct uh, relationship with uh, over 50 sake brewers directly in Japan. And we bring them into Hong Kong. And now in Hong Kong, uh, the Japanese sake actually cover at least 50%, half of the Japanese restaurant in Hong Kong are actually getting the, the product from us. So besides our four retail brand, uh, we also have a lot of sub brands. Uh, some sub brands are created by ourselves, like the Fusion Daddy, which is the ready to eat uh, counter. Uh, for example, uh, Cha Cha, which is our um, ice cream counter that actually created by us. And also we import uh, different uh, brand from uh, different country. For example, Royce Chocolate is very famous from uh, Hokkaido, Japan. And also like the Baluta Baluta, um, uh, also from the gourmet, more gourmet caviar shop, uh, also some of the non food. So we, we bring all this brand into our store brand. And these most of these brands are high quality and unique. So we are the exclusive distributor in Hong Kong to, to promote the brand to develop the brand. So now more focus on the gourmet food store, uh, which is C Super. So uh, you can see from our local uh, 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 slogan. Crafting a better lifestyle. Again, we really emphasize the lifestyle. So we bring in the product, we bring in the lifestyle to the customer, we educate them. So actually, just, just a quick story is uh, when we started this company back in 1996, uh, we already have our cheese counter. We have over like 100, 200 type of cheese, but nobody knows how, you know, how to eat the cheese back in Hong Kong, you know, 1996. So, we work really hard to bit by bit to grow the customer, to educate them, promote the tasting. So um, we we don't just sell you know popular items. So we want to bring the culture. We want to bring the, the good food to customer and, and make sure they know how to how to enjoy them. So our brand, uh, similar to our group, uh, actually we want to inspire food lovers to explore more food and wine. Uh, wine culture, we bring the culture to them from the world. Uh, enjoy cooking, people enjoy cooking, drinking, uh, very innovative people uh, in Hong Kong. So these are some pictures that you can see referenced in our store. Uh, we have 25, uh, we're actually entering tw uh, 26 years old now. Uh, we are in three markets, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Shanghai. In Hong Kong, we uh, have four retail stores. 
Uh, each store is, uh, our store size is ranging from 20,000 square feet to like 40,000 square feet. And then we have uh, a food court, amazing food hall food court uh, in our Times Square store. And then we, this is the new baby, uh, the convenience format uh, in the uh, subway station in MOT. MOT is one of the busiest station in Hong Kong. Uh, so uh, in Hong Kong, we have about uh, six outlets. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, we have uh, eight store uh, and in different shopping mall, and then mainly in the middle part of Taiwan and uh, to the north, especially Taipei. And then in Shanghai, you can see in Shanghai, we have three store uh, in, in Shanghai area. So in China, we are only in Shanghai right now, and actually we are expanding to uh, Nanjing uh, next year. So we will be stepping out of Shanghai uh, next year. So as you see, uh, most of the most of our store actually are in the most uh, premium uh, shopping mall in Hong Kong uh, with the most premium landlord. So our merchandise, our merchandise offer. So for the gourmet food store, uh, we have we carry over twenty thousand SKU uh, regularly. Uh, if we talk about the promotion, the festival um, products, we carry about over thirty thousand SKU a year. So 60% of them are directly import by us. So um, I think different than other supermarket uh, or the local supermarket that they really rely on different distributor or vendor in Hong Kong. Uh, we actually import everything, most of the things by ourselves. Uh, we have a very strong network uh, covering in a uh, different country, uh, 66 country. Uh, we have a lot of different partners. Uh, actually, I will share later on. Uh, uh, mainly focusing on the high-end product, good quality, healthy, gourmet food uh, unique product. So we have over 3000 category, basically anything that you can think of in, in, in food category we, we are carrying. Uh, about 15 groups of fruit and vegetable, meat, that is, that is cheese, seafood, and all that wine section. Uh, if we're talking about Japanese product, actually almost 90% uh, of the product we, we import directly. So our sourcing network. Uh, we actually source all our products, you know, from all over the world. Uh, we have a very strong sourcing network um, for 25 years. Uh, so we have a lot of long-term partners uh, all, all over the world. Uh, a lot of vendors, a lot of consolidators help us to consolidate, uh, a trade, uh, trade organization uh, collaborating with us on promotion or helping to import the country product to Hong Kong and finding the unique product to Hong Kong. Uh, and also we have our own sourcing office uh, in Japan, uh, in Taiwan, as well as in the state. Uh, we have a US office, sourcing office is called Sea Super Ocean Export. It's on the uh, west side, and it's actually in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, uh, it's a very small office, uh, but the strong point about a small uh, uh, a sourcing office locally is one is really we can get in touch with the, with the local, local supply. Uh, local supply, local food trend, uh, because we really emphasize the authenticity. So we really want to find the real, you know, U.S. food, real Japanese food, and so on. So, uh, so that's why we have been having the office in different locations. So, the other opportunity for the uh, local sourcing office is uh, because if you can see, comparing to a you know a mass market uh, supermarket chain which probably has 200 store or 300 store in Hong Kong, we only have like four outlets in Hong Kong. Uh, although our size is, is bigger than the normal size, but you know, we only have four stores. So our volume is not really big, but we aim for very good quality. So some of the supplier or, or distributor, they, they may not want to export, you know, for a small volume uh, overseas, because there's a lot of things that you need to take care of. We can consolidate in the US side. So for example, if you are in Texas, you want to you want to export to Hong Kong. You, there's there's one option that you don't need to export directly to Hong Kong. You can actually deliver to um, San Francisco, with which we have a warehouse there, and then I'll consolidate our office. You consolidate everything, and then they ship to us. So for you, it's less trouble uh, uh, if you don't do direct with, with us. Uh, we we can do it with our office in the state. So besides our own sourcing office, we also have our people uh, in Europe, uh, actually also, again, doing the local sourcing, finding good food. So we uh, heavily rely on importing. So uh, just to give you a scale, uh, sea shipment, we bring in about 25, uh, 20 footer container uh, per week. 
uh, from all over the world. Uh, for Asherman, because we have a lot of uh, fresh food, is also our main uh, uh, sourcing uh, criteria or direction. Uh, so we fly in a lot of products from all over the world. So we have about like 21, uh, around average 21 uh, uh, Asherman uh, per week. Uh, we also do promotion. Uh, so we do thematic promotion. Uh, uh, we do seasonal promotion, especially for the seasonal fresh fruit, whether it's strawberry or fish or different things. We also do uh, uh, festival uh, uh, promotion. Festival, uh, I think Christmas in Hong Kong is the biggest, uh, especially for us, it's also the biggest. So we talk about at least you know double the sales of the normal month so uh, hong kong people are very crazy about christmas thanksgiving is also big in hong kong uh, of course it's not as big as in the state uh but as you know uh, jennifer also mentioned there's a lot of very international people in hong kong so they also celebrate you know uh, uh thanksgiving christmas is the biggest thing um and also we do a lot of the uh, eastern and western festival whether it's japan asia or us or europe so uh, this is this is one example that we did uh, uh, partnering uh, uh, with the partner uh, U.S. Foodie Express. Uh, uh, so we do a U.S. fair uh, promoting the U.S. food. So you can see uh, this is an in-store promotion. We have a promotion area, very attractive uh, 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 food truck. Uh, although it's a, it's a fake food truck, but it attracts a lot of attention. People can come and do tasting. We promote the U.S. food and U.S. food culture. Uh, U.S. food is pretty popular in Hong Kong. I mean, just just as Jennifer mentioned, it's very popular in Hong Kong. Uh, people love. Uh, so there's a lot of people. You know, I think the the past ten or twenty years, a lot of people travel to the U.S. or study in U.S. So they actually a lot of the U.S. culture they brought into Hong Kong. Uh, myself is one of them. So so we really love the U.S. food culture. So uh, more and more food culture will be will be in Hong Kong as well. So very popular. Okay, so uh, that's a great introduction uh, of our group and, and the C-Super brand. So I'm going to give you a perspective of Hong Kong market trend. Uh, some of them are very similar to Jennifer. Uh, one, if you look at the top side, I, I kind of show you from the 2018 to very recent, uh, 2022 last uh, February, uh, to, give you a, to give you a taste of how Hong Kong has been changing in, in the retail sector. The top part, you see the blue line is the total retail. So whether it's food, non-food, jewelry, uh, anything that's from retail, these are the retail sales. The bottom part, the orange line is the supermarket. So including super, uh, traditional supermarket or uh, supermarket inside department store. So if you can see, uh, I separated a few section. Number one, from 2018 to middle of 2019, I, I would call this a happy year. So uh, where everything is booming, you know, tourism in Hong Kong is very good. You know, people are willing to spend. So you can see uh, retail market is quite stable. Uh, the supermarket is growing uh, as usual. Um, and then we enter the social unrest, which is the middle of uh, 2019 for the last about half a year at least. So you can see retail's been re impact. Uh, same, uh, well, supermarket relatively a little better because everybody still need to eat, uh, but less people going out, so it's still better. Uh, and then we enter the COVID for the past two years. So what you see, the Hong Kong retail dropped dramatically. Uh, you can see from 2018, uh, if, if we do an apple to apple January to January, you can see still on the downside, still not yet catch back to, you know, 2018. Uh, because of missing the tourists, uh, because people can't go out and they can, you know, they, they have less motivation to spend. So although it's been growing, uh, Hong Kong, Hong Kong is very unique because Hong Kong actually economy, economy bounced back real quick. Uh, you can see from Jennifer, Jennifer sharing that, oh, it, it jumped up 30 some percent very quickly. Uh, but we still not back to 2018. However, if you look at the supermarket, you can see if we do apple to apple, you know, from 2022 to 2018, it grew a lot. It grew already a lot. Now, uh, COVID is, I think, similar to other market or other country. COVID actually benefit for the grocery business because everybody is locked down. They have to be at home. Everybody is stocking up food. So you can see at the beginning of the COVID, supermarkets going very well, but for the Hong Kong retail is dropping crazily. 
Um, and then over the different wave of COVID uh, until the fifth wave, which is the most serious uh, COVID situation in Hong Kong, you can see it keep increasing. So, um, so that's why the, the whole food industry has been increasing. Now, uh, I think what's, what's for after this is, although, you know, the, the society will become better, you know, people will be going out to eat, but I think a certain amount of people are accustomed to cooking at home. And also after the COVID, people are more conscious about, you know, food hygiene, you know, hygiene as a whole. So I think people would be more cooked at home. So I think that will maintain a, a growth, but may not be that dramatic. Uh, maybe it drop a little bit, but then gradually we're going back. So I think uh, this is a very good sign for groceries uh, uh, market. So if we dig deeper into different categories, uh, it's actually the COVID uh, has different impact to different categories. Uh, first of all, fresh food. Fresh food benefits the most because everybody cooks at home. In Hong Kong, in, in Hong Kong, a lot of people like fresh food. So uh, fresh chicken, fresh meat, uh, uh, seafood, fish, all that, vegetables. So all categories have been growing. Uh, they're benefiting from, you can see these two years compared to before, uh, even to the good year is jump up a lot of, you know, many times already. So uh, people are limited to go out, people are cooking at home, people work from home, which eating more at home. So this definitely benefits for the fresh food. Dry food, on the other hand, it depends on the category. And you can see some downtrend on the COVID situation. Uh, the, their groceries, the beverage, the confectionery. So more impact on the impulse purchase. So the snacks, the beverage is more impact. So people don't buy that many, uh, that much. But in terms of cooking necessity, like the rice, the pasta, pasta sauce, uh, or the instant food, canned food, these are growing. Uh, bakery, bakery product at one point, it, it was like all out of stock in Hong Kong. There's no, no flowers in Hong Kong for a period of time. So people have really high demand on, on this, uh, kind of cooking necessity. And kind of these two, you will see in, in terms of the trend kind of canceling out. One is growing, one is dropping. Um, there's other some interesting things is the uh, coffee. Coffee, coffee, refined coffee beans, coffee capsule has a very increasing demand during the COVID because people are working from home. So they all drink coffee instead of going to Starbucks or other, other retailers. Um, at the same time, it's not only the COVID, at the same time, actually coffee culture in Hong Kong is growing. We can see from a number of coffee shops opening in Hong Kong, uh, but becoming less mass trend, uh, less uh, Starbucks, but more artisanal brand. Uh, a small shop. So uh, the, the coffee culture is actually also growing in Hong Kong. Non-food product, uh, household kitchenware, cooking, basically I would say is dropping because people buy less and go out less. But home cleaning, hygiene related protection, sanitizer, air dryer, these are high demand. Kitchenware, because people have to stay home for cooking, they actually do more cooking, baking, they do it for fun. So the kitchenware actually grow a lot, jump up a lot at the beginning of the COVID, but because these are long lasting products, they don't need to keep buying, you know, the, 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 the pans or the cookers. So uh, actually uh, the demand is slowing down uh, uh, over the COVID time. Wine, liquor, sake, you, you see, wow, it's a, it's a big jump uh, in terms of this uh, alcoholic uh, industry. But Actually, the de why there's such a sudden high demand in retail is because all the bar, all the restaurant are closing. So people had to drink at home, people gathering at home, people had to buy, you know, alcohol from, from the retail shop. So that's why this is the jump. I, when, when the situation open up, when the bar and restaurant open up, I, I'm pretty sure this will go back down, uh, quickly. So in general, um, what, what kind of growing trend in Hong Kong, in, in, in the food industry in Hong Kong? Um, there's four categories. One is the healthy food. So natural ingredient benefits for their own body. More and more people are caring about what they eat. So what they put in the mouth. So uh, I think this is, you know, it's a global trend. It's not just Hong Kong. Everywhere more people are concerning their health. So they, they, they care very much about what they eat. So customer might make small inquiry about what, what's the ingredient. So we, a customer asks us what, what's in the ingredient, what kind of health benefit it is. And also we can see government regulation are getting uh, more strict uh, on the selling, uh, on the food importing. Uh, convenience product over the COVID, a lot of people staying home, sorry. 
uh, and also Hong Kong people are very busy lifestyle. So uh, people, you know, like to have fast food. So having to be, you know, eating at home, so ready make meal, ready to cook product, you know, uh, especially frozen food has been growing. Uh, and easy to cook product, you know, just, just fry it or microwave, uh, very popular. Healthy diet, um, keto friendly, low carb, low sugar, vegan, uh, like impossible meal, vegetarian, uh, these are all increasing trends. Um, in Hong Kong, very international uh, city, people are very international culture. So they always look for new trends. So Hong Kong people always find new things, new trends. Um, on the other side is the trend is relatively shorter. So it could be a one year trend, it could be a six month trend, but they're always looking for new things to, to eat, to, to use. Another one is uh, elderly and pet care. These are growing categories. Why? Because Hong Kong birth rate has been dropping, continuously dropping. So Hong Kong people, you know, they, they have less and less baby. Every year is lower than the previous year. Uh, and there's many reasons, uh, economic reason, society, and people are having pets more. So and they treat the pet more, you know, they're willing to spend to buy quality food, quality product for the pet. So pet care, food and care has been increasing, you know, double digit over the past two years. Uh, another issue is aging popularity, uh, aging population. So if you can see the chart on the right hand side, because of the less birth rate, you know, this is 2060 some, so it becomes the, the heavily distributed in the higher age uh, population. So Elderly food is also increasing. So people, because people also want to maintain a very good quality lifestyle. So uh, a more quality elderly food are, you know, important to Hong Kong. Okay, so that's the overall Hong Kong trend. So what about us? So as a CSUPER, what we are looking for? Uh, in general direction, we are looking for best of the world. So we want the best quality, uh, not to not not the lowest price, but the quality. So we are very value about the uh, quality, best taste, best quality product from the world. Uh, gourmet because we are gourmet store, so we look for fine food and wine. Uh, chef selection, artisanal uh, productions. Um, uh, we also encourage for more green environment and sustainable. So sustainable sourcing is also one of one of the things that we're looking for whether it's MSC, ASC certified, uh, seafood, echo packaging, welfare animal, non-GMO, verified, et cetera. Uh, healthy and, and well-being, uh, healthy food is uh, continuously growing, organic, uh, natural ingredient, added benefit supplement. So uh, in terms of category, these are just some categories, but actually any types of food that we, we will carry. Uh, to more be, be more specific on different categories, for groceries, uh, we, are, we look for new product, new trend, new brand that never been here in Hong Kong, health and wellness product, uh, good ingredient for the body, added benefit uh, like the nuts, probiotic, prebiotic, etc. Um, festive, festive item. Uh, like I said, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's quite big. So a lot of uh, uh, festive items like the lobster soup, uh, a lot of uh, Christmas ingredient, turkey, um, things to make the turkey. These are the things that are very popular for grocery. Professionally, uh, new and trendy, uh, healthy snack, gluten-free, nuts-free, uh, energy bar, gifting also. Uh, Hong Kong Hong Kong also have a gifting culture. So, so uh, give each other a gift company. So gifting uh, some of the gift box, the bigger size of the gift pack are uh, also welcome. Uh, festive related on confectionery like Easter, Halloween, Hong Kong also celebrate Halloween, although it's not, not huge, but a lot of people will still dress up uh, and buy candies and celebrate at home. Christmas, again, especially at Van Canada, uh, this has been growing um, culture for the past five years in Hong Kong. A lot, a lot of people are uh, having the Van Canada for Christmas. Beverage, uh, new and trendy, uh, plant-based meal, energy drink, healthy product, uh, high quality food juice, echo packing drinks, uh, like water, like the just water, uh, uh, paper, paper water, uh, gifting also. So like in Christmas, we also have the event candle, uh, beer event candle. Uh, although it's quite big, it's quite popular. Uh, festive related, like Christmas, New Year's, like sparkling juice, sparkling drinks, uh, event candle. Um, chill and frozen, chill and frozen, like I said, frozen has been growing trend. Uh, people buy more frozen food there to stock at home. So new and trendy, uh, frozen ready meal, easy to cook, 
uh, mini ready meal like snacks, mini burger, mini sausage, hot dog, vegan, like impossible meat, beyond meat, uh, all kinds of uh, um, vegan products, uh, festive related, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, fresh meat, fresh meat, organic, cage free, uh, natural, uh, frozen, frozen also frozen high quality food. Uh, poultry, frozen turkey, um, turkey breast, uh, quail, and all that. Um, organic, uh, gluten free sausage, high quality vegan meat, and uh, also what we're looking for. Um, delicatessen and cheese, ham, high quality, clean able, less ingredient, less uh, salt. Um, cheese and ham snack platter. Uh, bread, uh, frozen, has to be frozen. Uh, bread, 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 buns, uh, pita bread, uh, wraps. A high quality cheddar cheese, farmhouse, artisanal brand, vegan cheese. Uh, I think vegan cheese is especially lacking in, in Hong Kong, uh, but also is a growing trend. Health and wellness in general, uh, like apple cider, like bread, we sell the bread uh, uh, cider, uh, vinegar related supplements, um, good ingredients for body, added benefit. Non food also, non food kitchen equipment, but non electronic because the voltage in US and Hong Kong is different. So actually, basically, you cannot use the grid unless you're international voltage, otherwise, you cannot use in Hong Kong. So, kitchen equipment like pots and pans, barbecue, um, echo, echo friendly, uh, reusable dining too, food storage, echo wrap, ziplock bags, uh, cleaning detergent, uh, mainly on organic, natural, echo friendly packets type of product. So, um, that's my sharing. I, I hope I give you a um, pretty good idea of what you know what we are looking for, uh, what the supermarket or the grocery market trend in Hong Kong. So, um, so um, welcome for any question. I pass it to you, uh, Danielle. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, wonderful. That was um, so interesting and a, a different perspective than what we usually hear. So um, thank you for sharing all of that information about the brand and, and uh, what you all import and trends that you're seeing. Um, we have had a few questions come into the chat and the Q&A. Um, first question, could the panel briefly describe the process of regulations of trade for craft beer and wine importers, the permitting requirements, et cetera? Uh, uh, yeah, let me try. Um, actually, import to Hong Kong is quite easy. Uh, Hong Kong, it's actually almost no requirement for importing most of the products. Um, um, uh, but Hong Kong is more regulation on selling. So what does it mean? So you can import a product, you may not be able to sell it. Okay. So uh, so importing is easier. Uh, it's not really not you can sell it, but there's a little bit more requirement on selling it. For example, uh, if you want to sell certain product, you need labeling. Uh, uh, the label, the ingredient labeling, the energy labeling. So uh, indicating the trans fat, sugar level, um, and some of the standard may be different than the U.S. So sometimes we need to, uh, uh, sometimes we need to do relabeling. So the supplier need to give us the information to translate to the Hong Kong standard, and then we have to do the relabeling. So, okay. So uh, going back to the question, uh, I think the craft beer, the wine import, no, not much regulation. Uh, I think mainly is the custom. Um, uh, but uh, like the, the, the tax is more on the liquid, um, not the regular wine, not the beef. So okay. I think uh, importing is quite quite easier. There are other fresh food, of course, there are more limitations on fresh food uh, um, regulation because of more food safety products. But in terms of pre pack in terms of the wine or, or the beer, uh, it's very, relatively easy. Okay, great. So the, the difficult part, if I understand what you're saying, is more on the, the retailer in Hong Kong who has to work through the labeling and the well, regulations. E yes and no, because when I say difficulty, it's only comparative to the import is more, more difficult, but yeah. it's actually not, not that difficult. Okay, so great. It, it, this is one of the advantages that Jennifer talked about is, is yeah. this is free point. Yep. So in terms of tax, in terms of what you want to import, of course, you cannot import your <laughs> Uh, but other than that, you know, pretty much you can put in. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, Danielle, we point, also have a couple. We also have a couple of reports. Um, and I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not techie savvy to like grab the link and paste it on the yeah, chat. Yeah. I tried. Um, but we have a couple of reports that talk about the customs and 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 uh, what Ellen was was referring to. We can send those to you if you can you can uh, share Please. with with the group. Yep. And if there are any questions, they can always reach out um, to us on the on the regulations. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's great. 
Um, another question, does the Hong Kong International Wine and Spirits event include craft beer? I believe it does. I think so, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, Don, we can probably get you that answer um, definitively, but I'm pretty sure that it's beer, wine, and spirits. Actually, craft Chris, beer in Hong Kong is quite popular. So I, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're, they're included in the, in the show as well. Okay. Chris, you wanna chime in on that? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, because um, although the name of the show is called the Wine and Spirits Fair, because these are the two core elements uh, within the show, but in fact, any alcoholic beverages, including sake, Craft beers are, uh, were also featured in the past uh, wine and spirits fair. So I think it really depends on the show this year, which will be held in November, uh, depending on the, um, the prevailing um, uh, COVID situation. By that time, if I think uh, we can uh, allow the in-person attendance to the show, uh, there is a chance that uh, all those alcoholic beverages, uh, including um, say sake, craft beers, uh, they can all join. And, and featured alongside some other friends of alcohol, like uh, say uh, cheeses and other meats that complements the tasting of mm. uh, all those good uh, alcoholic drinks. Yeah. Great, great. It's like the whole lifestyle. Yeah. Nice. Uh, someone else, Elmond, was asking if you have sales trend for trends for US craft beer. Uh, but sorry, I, I don't have this specific for U.S. craft beer, but um, in general, craft beer has been growing for the past, I think for the past five years. Um, a lot of local uh, brewer, a lot of Hong Kong people are doing their own craft beer. Um, so uh, the market is growing bigger and bigger and the sales is growing bigger also. I, I, do, I do think there are good opportunity for U.S. craft beer as well. Yeah, great. Um, someone is asking if they've sold some beer to a small importer or distributor in mainland China, does that exclude us from developing a relationship with City Super? Uh, oh, you mean you, uh, no, no, actually, if, if you have someone already distributed in Hong Kong, you can still do direct with us, whether it's, you know, whether you deal direct to Hong Kong, or like I said, you can deal with our office in, in the US, um, uh, we're welcome for that. Because we do work with people, we do work with brands that they have the distributing channel um, to distribute other uh, other supermarket in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and still want to work with us. Now, okay. if, why? Because we 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 love to work with the principal uh, because we want to deliver the 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 principal message. We want to deliver what the value of the principal want to deliver to the customer. A lot of time when you go through the distributor, um, it it translate becomes numbers. This is not what the value you want you want the customer to perceive. So, so we we love to work with uh, work work directly with the principal. Okay, great. Um, and then I think the other two questions were, um, can I get Mr. Chung's contact? <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe um, after this, I will send a, a contact to I think either Jennifer or Danielle. Uh, actually, I, I will give a, a contact of our specialist, which uh, she's responding. Her name is Gabriel. Uh, she's responding on all our sourcing um, in the Euro and US. So uh, she'd be able to talk to each other and look at the product and, and, and then make connection with our office, whether it's going to ship through our office or ship direct to Hong Kong. She'll yeah. be able to do that. That's perfect. That's what I was thinking as well. Maybe you're, is, is she in San Francisco? No, she's in UK. Oh, oh okay. She, she, she's, in, she's stationed in Europe, traveling between UK and France, okay. but she oversees all the Western product. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that sounds uh, very interesting. I think um, for some of our, uh, our specialty products who might be newer exporters, the fact that it is smaller volume um, might feel... Um, a little more uh, easier or you know less risky. To... Well, actually, we love small volume. Yeah, yeah. That's... We actually, to be honest, we when we work with U.S. Uh, vendor or supplier or even the, the, the brand itself, uh, we actually encounter a lot of issue about the minimum. Mm. Uh, because I understand U.S. brand are, are much bigger. Uh, in terms of volume, they do expand too. So we actually we we really love to work with small brand. Yeah. quality artisanal brands small brands so we we do small volume but i, I think our customer also like that uh, because our customer very it's very unique that our customer they, they don't look for the mass product they they want the new thing they want the unique product so that's our position so right so they will come to our store i give you a very different so 
in in general, customer go to a supermarket, they they very quickly because they already have shopping list. It's more about needs. They go in and they shop and go. People come to our store, walk around for hours uh, because they want to explore and see different products. So, so I think a lot of new product we have the ability to you know to get into the the customer market. Great, great. Um, so all of the the companies in our programs are small businesses, and I think many of them would fit that that niche. Um, I would love to come spend some hours in your store and explore. It sounds really lovely. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Welcome. Uh, when, when the port uh, open again. I know, one day. <laughs> uh, thank you all for being with us. This was um, such an interesting webinar. I'm excited to um, get the recording finished and we'll put it up on our website. Um, so for all of you who are on the call, um, if you have a MySesta account, you can log in and go to the past webinars tab and um, and you can watch the, the webinar and see um, the, uh, the presentations as well. And um, I'll also be following up with some of the, the um, reports that Jennifer mentioned and some contact information. So uh, thank you all for being with us and to all of our attendees, thanks for joining. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, everyone. All right, you too. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Good day. Good day. Thank you.